Yo, what's up guys? Okay, so really quick, just wanted to make a video for the family. Uh, I just want to show you some love because you guys show me love by supporting me every single month. And I freaking love you guys, man. You guys definitely get me fired up to want to wanna do this, to want to help you, to, you know, seeing it grow. As, as an educator, getting to see you guys learn and progress is like one of the best things that we can do. Plus, you guys are just cool guys, and it's just cool that we can see impact. I mean, I know Slim's got his girl on crypto now, and Fluffy, man, you've been kicking ass on these trades, man. You're really doing well. I'm proud of you, and I'm sure you're making money. I'm sure you're making money. So it's just good to see that my people are thriving, and I feel like I have some impact on that. So I don't care if I have 100 people or five people. Like, we going to go to the moon together, right? We don't leave a man behind. So either way, anyway, let's, uh, let's talk. So what I have here is the Bollinger Bands on. These Bollinger Bands are represented by the yellow squigglies as well as this middle median line. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard of Bollinger Bands before. Maybe you have used them. Maybe you haven't. Uh, I'm going to kind of give you a quick synopsis of what it is and then the strategy that I'm working with. Okay. So what I've done is I've taken these Bollinger Bands and I've actually done, you can see what they represent basically is you have the top side being like your upper range, right? And then you have the yellow bottom line being the lower range with this pinkish uh, median midline, okay? Now what that means is, as you can see, as we go back through all of this, uh, what you'll notice is this will help you identify squeezes in the market. So when you're, when you're working and looking for squeezes, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of like a short squeeze, or something like that, you can definitely notice it from Bollinger Bands, right? Uh, like for example, this was a squeeze, right? Give me just one second here. Okay, so this little chunk right here, you should, you started to get pretty tight. So just to kind of give you an example of how it works. So right here is basically saying you don't want to go any lower than this lower yellow band and you don't want to go any higher than this top yellow band. And then here is your middle median line. So as you can see, we had our ebbs and flows that go in the market. You can kind of see that almost like a heartbeat, right? It just kind of goes up, down, choppy, choppy, chop, 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 and then eventually you sold off. Now let's kind of go into that a little bit further. So what what I'm looking at is you can see this midline. So right here, you can see you had a ton of green volume and then you broke out above this and you had some nice, nice ass candles up here. Okay. That's a hundred and sixty percent move in 23 day, days. Now, granted, you wouldn't have caught all that. I wouldn't have caught all that. But what you can do and what I think can be very profitable is you can try to identify right like, like what we do here we try to identify Adam and Eve we try to identify bottoms we try to identify patterns in the market and with what just this simple strategy how it would work is trying to keep this within the yellow lines well if you're trending towards the bottom of the yellow line right then maybe you would like to think that you would see you know a pushback right because you don't want to go any lower I mean as you can see these things really until they go right until you see a short squeeze which is what happened here. Uh, so right here is your squeeze. It's squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Uh, and then right here you dumped out. All these are rejection wicks. So every single one of these is a rejection wick. Like you tried to poke out above this yellow line. You got rejected. Tried to poke out, tried to poke out, tried to poke out. And eventually you lost your steam. So when you did that and you broke below this, this red line right here, you knew to get out of this damn trade. You knew, to, I mean, we weren't in it, but you would have known to get the hell out of here. Okay. And then you see this massive, massive sell off, sell off, sell off. Cool. Okay. So come forward to foreign day, it looks like we had that massive sell off. Now we are in the accumulation stage. And eventually, excuse me. Wow. Excuse me. I had a burp. <laughs> we, uh, so we have this massive sell-off that goes into this descending wedge that is going to tighten, 
okay this has to tighten this little area right here you're narrowing the gap so there's only so much time left before you get to a decision okay and when you do you will short squeeze or you will you know what I mean you will have a squeeze of some point right you're kind of still falling falling at this point but eventually you're going to nosedive into here and you will have a pop. It eventually will have to pop, right? As a recovery bounce, you're gonna get some kind of recovery bounce. So maybe if you go to the daily time scale and you take your last swing low to, I'm sorry, swing high, last swing high to swing low, maybe this is your low, maybe it's not. Maybe you come all the way down here, but either way, you would like to think that you would bounce, you know, up in here, somewhere in here to create that divergence and then maybe even sell off for lower prices. Not saying you can't still go lower, but even in this bear trend, this negative trend that you've been in, you can now see that you eventually have to have a spike like you did here. You sold off, you sold off, you sold off, you squeezed right here. You squeezed what you squeezed to the upside. Okay. I know I'm feeling a lot. I don't want to confuse you, but again, I was talking about those squeezes where you're squeezed here and you squeeze that grape shot to the upside. And that's why you saw this. However, even though that was a 200% move, a 200% move was still bearish because you set a lower, a low, right? From here to here still bearish like you didn't do your I mean even though you had 200% of gains you still didn't break above it so you were not setting yourself up for higher price higher prices okay but eventually time is going to expire and it's going to have to get it could take a week it could take a month it could crap out and be awful right it's on some of its lowest lows of all time so why would this asset ever see higher prices but that's what we do in the market. We interpret because we know we have a last confirmed swing high and we are chasing a swing low. All right. So eventually we would like to think we're going to get it somewhere within this triangle. Okay. This downward wedge. And if we do, then why would it be crazy to think that we couldn't see another 200% move? Right. And the 200% move puts you, oh my God. Oh my God, family, it puts you at the 382, at like 851, like if this is your low, I don't think it, it may not be, but if it is, holy freaking crap, man, like just to do another, just to do what it did before, just to do the same thing, right, just if it goes to here, it creates bearish divergence to here and can still sell off, but you can catch a 200% move potentially to the upside. That's how that could work. Now, I would want to be very conservative, okay? Conservative means probably the 236, right? 120%. And that's stating that this is, right, you're, you're going to, either you're going to get one more leg down or this is it. Like, you're pretty much getting to nothing. Now, some people would argue that that isn't your high, right? Like, I would say that this is discernible swing high. Some people would say you could fit from here and then you would get lower, like lower, more realistic targets for shorter term. Like, if you wanted to play a shorter term uh, situation on this, then you would say, okay, maybe this is my low. Well, now you can understand how I'm getting to the number of 380. Okay, I'd like to see that 380, which is still a massive, massive move for us. Okay, so either one of those, like you either got like a 40% move probably or a 200% move probably all over within, it's going to probably pop to the upside, either a wick or something within the next, from now to probably three months. You know, I don't, I can't give you a timeline because this is a daily time scale. Each, each one is a day, right? And your current downtrend has been going on for 65 days and your previous downtrend went on for like 
63 days, six, a little, maybe a little bit less regardless. But I mean, it's getting to be about, about that time to start thinking about it, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's just some of my thoughts. I'm not trying to make this a super long video, um, but I just, you know, this is important and this can really make you some money in the market. Not saying it's going to play out this way, but it very well could, right? And let's just even say, for example, like we may never ever get there, but another thing that kind of sizes up is taking the top of this Bollinger Band, right? This top one. If, if we can just retouch the top of that, that looks like it's gonna put us around the 236, which is right around that 380 target. So it's just coinciding variables amongst oscillators. Right now, I'm not saying you're not going to hit 198 because, I mean, you are on the downside and you're below the midline. Like, all those things are not good. But you are towards the bottom side of the Bollinger. So maybe you have one more drop here. You could have another drop. If you drop one more time, that would really suck. We would get stopped out and we would look for a re-entry. But just know that eventually you have to see a bounce. You have to see a decent recovery bounce because... It looks like you're definitely in a in a wedge, right? And if we can just pull off this Bollinger really quick, yeah. I mean, just to clean it up for for you guys, I mean, we are definitely chasing a bottom here. And if you guys remember that, uh, what's it called? Uh, this, this indicator that I have showed you guys a couple times, this RSI divergence, you're getting pivots, right? Getting pivots to the low side. So eventually you would like to think that maybe you could have a moonshot, okay? So these are just some of my thoughts. Obviously, these are just opinions because, I mean, they're oscillators, they're ideas, they're thoughts, but none of them are proven, right? You can't prove anything in this market, but like, as you guys know, like, there are such things as trade setups, okay? And there are such things as being profitable profitable in the market. I mean, you guys already know. Like, you guys you guys banging in with me every single day. You guys are in and out. Like, we are family at this point. You know what I mean? So, I, like I said, I appreciate you guys' love. Uh, let's go get this freaking crypto, man. So, be careful of, like, maybe one more leg down, but I really don't think we're going to have that. I really think that... I really think we're getting there, man. It looks to be like a whole, a, lot, uh, a lower high here. And then show me that show me that 380. If we get to there, I expect nothing more. If we if we just get to there, I expect nothing more. But also really one one quick thing too I wanted to show is just by doing Fibonacci's, right? Just by doing your Fibonacci retracement, you can see that we may fall short because we are kind of finding potentially a bottom here of you know of a huge sell-off so we hit the 382 right you sold off went down to zero you found a swing high to swing low and you hit the 382 and you backed out but now you're getting above the 236 and if you get above the 236 then most of the time you would like to think that you would hit the the 0.5 or the 382 then those are your first first areas of value so Let's uh let's see what happens. We'll see what we play out here. But I think we have big money to be made, guys. I think there's a chance. Keep your stops tight. But I freaking love you. And uh, I'll see you in the Discord. Cheers.